going on there guys it is earthmaster here on this tuesday evening august 17 2021 is the date about 9 p.m straight up west coast time in california looking at the latest quake on the globe it's going to be a 5.8 can you guess where down here at the south end of the globe towards the south end anyway around the south sandwich islands kicking up once again a lot of cluster of earthquakes kicking off over the last 24 hours or so uh, quite a bit of movement down there, no doubt. Uh, here we go, looking at the latest USGS map. A little interesting earthquake off the coast of Oregon here. Uh, well off into the Cascadia Basin. A surface quake at 3.1 kilometers. The Cascadia subduction zone thrust area sits here to the uh, just east of this line. Don't see too many earthquakes out there. Kind of odd to see that one out there, but uh, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Uh, Japan looking still pretty quiet for the most part. A little bit of activity out there, a 4.8. For the most part, pretty quiet down here along the Tonga. Fiji area looking at uh, some further deep movement as well. But uh, I think the big picture over the last 24 hours or so. Let's go ahead and add the uh, magnitudes here, which doesn't really help out for this area as far as the all magnitudes go. 5.8, the latest quake there on that map. Of course, they had that 6.1 as well. Quite a bit of movement, folks. I mean, it's will it ever die down? I don't know. Taking a look at the activity, though. Um, where was that last 5.8? That 5.8 was further down here. Uh, we haven't seen anything. Well, I guess we did see a 6.3 here. Um, kind of like an aftershock. I don't. I can't say it's an aftershock or not. Let's go ahead and look at all magnitudes here over the last seven days. There was three different clusters. We had the 7.5 up here to the north, and then we had the 8.1 a little bit further to the south. Uh, looks like about 50, 75, uh, probably about 75 kilometers between these two, the two big ones. And then we had a little separation uh, down here by itself where a 6.3, well, it was a 6.3, it looks like a 6.2 now, unless it got buried underneath all this quake activity. Uh, so still kind of interesting to, to watch this unfold. Um, I still think it's very possible we could be, be looking at something possibly bigger, uh, especially with all this uh, earthquake activity just kind of migrating around the region. So definitely a hot spot of activity there in the uh, South Sandwich Islands area. Some movement uh, up around the coast of Peru as well, 4.5. And uh, not a whole lot going on around Puerto Rico. Uh, throughout the uh, Caribbean, looking pretty quiet. Uh, Guatemala areas, uh, what do we got, 4.4 just off the coast there. And uh, looking at the states, uh, a little bit of heightened earthquake activity, as you can see, starting with that uh, earthquake off the coast of, of uh, Oregon there. Intermountain West, seeing a little bit of movement as well. Yellowstone, Pacific Northwest, uh, even a little earthquake over here around the North Carolina region, 2.7 at 5.6 kilometers. Let's look at the activity up here in the Pacific Northwest. Most of it looks to be around the Seattle area. Not a good sign. The Seattle fault system, very capable of producing a significant size quake right underneath the city of Seattle. That would not be good. Uh, a little bit of movement, deep movement, uh, 24 kilometers for that 2.2, right smack dab on the uh, Seattle fault system. Uh, and also a couple other smaller quakes in the region. Mount Rainier, a little bit of activity to the west of the volcano. All other areas to the south throughout Oregon looking pretty quiet. A little swarm of activity just outside of Lassen Peak. Lassen Peak sits around this area right here. Uh, these are some very small, very, very small microquakes here uh, kicking off. But it is somewhat of an interesting uh, little swarm taking place here. Not... I'm, and I'm telling you, it's not really smack dab on the uh, summit. Let me see here. What do we got for satellites? The peak sits over here. You can see the old flows uh, coming from the, uh, the, the Mount Lassen area. This swarming activity sits about, oh, a couple miles or so to the southwest of Mount Lassen, about three miles or so. And most of this is running about three kilometers below surface. So it's something to watch, no doubt. Uh, just don't see too much earthquake activity at Mount Lassen. But then again, it is an active volcano. And, uh, you know, that could change. We could see uh, definitely see some uptick. We'll 
keep a close eye on it. Uh, not a whole lot going on around the Sacramento Bay Area, um, including, well, what do we got down here just off the hills here? A little deeper movement uh, taking place well off the San Andreas Fault over to the east. A couple earthquakes there, kind of keep an eye on. Southern California, not a whole lot going on down there. Just some microquakes along the San Jacinto Fault area. And if you notice, a little bit of swarming around the Salton Sea. Uh, but definitely not a, I shouldn't even say a swarm, just a few microquakes uh, just at the southern end. Very small quakes striking that area. Uh, the Aleutian Trench region, pretty quiet. Uh, just a couple small quakes up here, 4.5 and uh, some other movement stretching over towards the east. Hawaii, let's see what we got going on here in the southern southeastern area. Kilauea has definitely calmed down quite a bit as far as their earthquake movement goes. This was kind of kicking up uh, a few days ago. Now, most of the activity confined here, southeast flank. Uh, and of course, the typical deep earthquake activity at that in the uh, Big Island. Uh, what else? I think that's about it, folks. Not a whole lot going on. Let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map here on along the Pacific Northwest. And wow, zero. That kind of shocked me. This kind of shocked me because with all the deeper movement up here, including the activity off the coast, hey, that can't be good. That's uh, kind of odd, you know, there's no slippage. What's going on? Does that mean we're, we're about ready to break? I don't know. Um, we see it often. It comes and goes. The trimmer along the Cascadia comes and goes. Uh, just kind of odd. I thought we would see some, uh, at least a few trimmers along the uh, areas up here to the north just due to that deeper earthquake activity around Seattle, but uh, nothing being reported by the PNSN network. Yellowstone National Park, couple small microquakes along the uh, Holmes Hill area, Maple Creek section, uh, but overall nothing really spectacular to speak of. Some interference over here along the east entrance. This is all crazy and I, I don't know what the heck's going on there, but definitely not earthquake activity. If that was earthquake activity, I would definitely be showing up there in the, uh, on the other seismographs there. Let's see possible maybe they got some thunderstorms up there let's go ahead and check that out real quick oh i see i see i see i see there's definitely a line of storms um around west yellowstone but that's kind of odd it's all the way to the southwest uh, but it could be definitely uh, picking up potentially on the east side as well just dependent on the sensitivity there's some of the swarming or not swarming but uh looks like some of the storm activity kicking off there but either way there's definitely a line of thunderstorms making its way up from the southwest uh, looks like from Idaho Falls headed towards the uh, um, the Yellowstone National Park area so that will probably be shown up uh, pretty significantly on the uh, seismographs here all right folks have a good night stay safe I do have my nephew with me so I gotta cut it short and uh, get him ready for bed kind of past my bedtime kind of past his bedtime Drop that there a little bit to the last 24 hours. All right, guys, stay safe out there. Be prepared. And I uh, hope everyone has a, a glorious evening. Stay safe, everyone. Peace.